the company of curlews. Chapter 5 Suckers, Obsessions and Going Home I don't remember much about my infant life. But yes, I remember the cod liver oil and orange juice. Used to give it out free in the war for the children. Food office in Queen Street. You're having it, my mother would say. Then hold my nose while dosing me with the stuff. She was a good mum. Bit aggressive with the medicine when I think about it. Now, when I was six... My grandfather took me and my uncle Di on the river, tied a rope around our middles. You got to be safe, Jackman, he said to me. He made us sit together in a smaller coracle he had made, tied to him we were, umbilical he like. That was how it all started, my love affair with the river and with fishing. I could see my grandfather found comfort in work in the river, Always a smile from the kind man. He taught us both, Di and me like brothers, how to hold the nets, how to paddle, figure of eight, have a feel for the depth of the river. He knew the riverbed as if it was his garden path. He wanted us to hear and feel the fish through our hands. Mind you, some things he couldn't teach. It was only through being on the river that we learnt to work together, a team we were, me and Uncle Di. And when he died in 95, we were about to celebrate our 50th year together. Diagnosed one year, gone the next. Broke my heart. One of my best nights fishing was with Di, way back now. I'd been married a couple of years, 1964, I think. Branwen, striking woman. Oh, I remember how Eva had just been born, and they were good times. I was on top of the world. We were flying. Since the day I saw Branwen in... In the county primary, I knew she was for me. She'd asked me when we were in Standard 4, 11 we were, did I fancy going for a walk down the river? We sat there, talking about the birds and the flowers. Early spring it was. Daffodils and snowdrops. And she explained the difference between the boy and the girl blackbird. And then she kissed me. The coins went in the cap. It's a tradition to see who runs the river first, who was first go to fish. The run is basically from the quay down to the White Bridge. We don't go no further. I didn't mind when I went. I was confident I could catch my fair share. Six coins, six pairs. Empty and down it was. Some of the boys had called off. Raining buckets it was. Tough night to be out. Donkey jacket wasn't going to be enough to keep the cold rain out. We looked more like, like trawler men out on the deep Atlantic North Seas, all oil skins and welly boots. My uncle Di, seen as a fair man, is asked to pull the first coin. D1, he says. Ralph, that's yours. The licence number of the boat is on the coin. We end up being last. Ralph is laughing, thinking he has the jump on us. But it's no worries. I watch him launch in. I notice the scar, still visible on the left side of his face. The street light shines on him at a certain angle. He reminds me of Lon Chaney in The Phantom of the Opera. The first turn he does, he returns with two three-pounders. A good catch, he says. Two good size to win, eh? He's the only one to have caught anything. 
As we come back from our first run, he's there, gloating, showing the others his prize. Nobody else has had a sniff. We put our coracles down on the bank. Anything, boys? he asks. And before we could say anything, he gloats again. Look at them lovelies. Pride before the fall, as they say. Aye, they are lovely, Ralph. Lovely, aye, says Di. Then Di and me pull out two eight-pounders and at the same time slap them on the seats of our coracles. We got their mother and father, yeah? <laughs> we laughed. Now we have put Ralph's nose out of joint. He's got a cob on. He's going home. I got enough, he says. Anyway, I don't need to be catching fish all night. Bit of a laugh, this is. I make my money in other ways. You're all a big joke. See you, suckers! Ralph Richards. I never got on with him ever since I'd had that to do with him in the pub over him bad mouthing my brother. I tried but I could never take to him. Uncle Di used to tell me to have some humility. Forgive, he would say. Never forget, but forgive. Well, I never forgave and I never forgot. That night fishing, ugh, I was so confident. I had a determination about me to show that Ralph Richards that I was the king of the river. And he was a spineless hanger-on. I felt, oh, I felt the grudge rummaging in my gut. One by one the other pairs left, soaked through, miserable, until there was only me and I. They had caught nothing and could not understand the luck of our net. The rain, it didn't stop all night. So sweet to my lips, so it kept me going. The night began to take its toll, but a defiant will drove me on, and die had to follow me. My thirst for salmon couldn't be quenched, even when Di was screaming for his bed, pleading with me to stop. Are you on drugs, he'd ask? And in the strange pitch black of the morning night, a squall choir of seagulls squawked, urging the fish into the net. Now the coracle is a light boat to carry, but every turn we did that night, the heavier it became. And as dawn was coming, I said to Di, One more run? He didn't answer. He knew we were doing it, whatever his reply. Even the curlew screamed out its eerie morning call, urging us on. Aye, last one, I said to a bird I couldn't see. We drifted down the net in its usual semicircle between the boats. We did more than our fair share, but this time my senses were aware. They were on the edge that there was one last big fish to catch. Oh, that's a big one, Di, I said. I'd never felt such a hit. I don't feel nothing, he replied. It's massive, I'm telling you. Are you sleeping? I started to pull the net in. I don't feel nothing, he said again. We finish our last run. I put my foot on the river bank and the rain that has been with us all night suddenly stops, as if someone turned the tap off. In the distance I can't see, but I can hear some geese gently barking further down river. Two swans across the other side placidly paddle out of the bulrushes that frame the river. Three ducks swim behind, peaceful. A gang of cheeky jackdaws squawk the metallic morning call as they fly from their roost. As we float under the bascule bridge, you can hear the pigeons quietly snoring away. It's been a night and a half. The sun wakes up over Langana Hill. The bird song is in full chorus now as we make our way home with our catch, minus the thirty pounder. Arguing we are, the die had missed it. 
I'm going to call you Sleepy, or Dopey, or one of the dwarves in any case. I didn't fall asleep, I'm telling you, he says. Uh, grumpy it is then. I laugh at my own joke. We enter the house, the door is off the latch. Smoky, warm silence of an early morning home invites us in. Fire is still gently throbbing its last embers in the grate of the night before. Branwen, love, I shout from downstairs. Come and have a look at this. She doesn't stir. Branwen, love, I shout louder. Come on, girl, shake your backside. There's a bit of stamping around upstairs. And from the landing is a whispered shout. Be quiet, you big oaf. Baby's just gone back to sleep. Where have you been? She comes downstairs eventually with baby Eva in a shawl and finds me emptying the last few fish into the bath. No, she says. Sits on the sofa, lays Eva down. She's well upset. I have a baby that has been up half the night on the breast. I can't have fish in the bath, not after the night I've had. Well, where do you expect me to put them, sweetheart? I ask her. There's an awkward silence. She doesn't answer me. It's been a good night, Branwen, says Di, trying to calm her down. She turns to Di with a scowl. Why don't you just go home, Di? You must be tired. I needed to calm her down. I sit next to her, take her hand, stroke her forearm. It's the silkiest, softest skin. It's all right. I'm sorry, I say. I should have been more thoughtful. My wife, a handsome woman at the best of times, but now her beauty shines through the hardship of the sleepless night. Yes, she looked tired from feeding the baby through the night. But I love this woman. I take her face between my hands and slop her with a big kiss. The amount of fish we have caught will serve us right for a few weeks. We'll live handsomely and the rent will be paid for sure. Let me sleep a few hours, I say, and we'll sell them as soon as after. All I could think of, to be honest, was the night to come, the more fish to be caught, and that Ralph Richards, my stomach stirred again, and that Ralph Richards could shove his smarmy grin where the sun don't shine. <laughs> 